Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. I'm going to be talking to you about what you really need to know about medical ethics for your medicine interview questions. If we've not met before, my name is Danny. I'm a first class biomedical science graduate and I'm on my journey to becoming a doctor. I'm going to use my experiences from interviews to help you get through yours. And stay to the end for the best tips. You sit down. So, you've probably heard about the four pillars of medical ethics already, so I will talk about them a little bit, but I'll focus on some of the more niche parts that maybe you may not have come across yet. So the four pillars of medical ethics are to do justice, so this usually refers to uh, allocating NHS resources either to one part or another, for example, giving a kidney to a certain individual over the other, or giving a, a certain type of treatment, for example, uh, a chemotherapy, um, when in reality you might be able to do, might be able to increase the quality of life for more people with spending less money, e.g. giving a simple tablet to stop high blood pressure. Beneficence is to do good, so giving the patient the best treatment that will help them get the best quality of life. Non-maleficence is to do no harm, so choose the route that causes the least suffering to the patient. And autonomy, respecting an individual's right to make their own choices about their treatment options. Now, these can be applied to different medical scenarios in the MMIs, and which you want to discuss these pillars the pros and cons to that certain situation. So for example, if you're choosing between two patients with different pathologies, for example, giving a kidney to a individual with cirrhosis due to um, alcohol consumption, or giving it to someone that has an autoimmune problem, you'd have to discuss the, these pillars with regards to each patient. In these situations, it's important that you think about when you give a, a transplant or a treatment, how many quality life years is this adding to the patient's life? This is what doctors use to decide this in everyday practice in the NHS. Confidentiality, it's quite a simple one, but it's important to know what are the parameters at which you break confidentiality, which is usually when the patient is gonna cause harm to other people. For example, if someone has been diagnosed partially blind, you have the right to inform the DVLA if that you know that they've continued to drive after your advice. For example, if they come back into clinic and they tell you. Assessing competency. So this can rear its head in different ways, usually using uh, children, but it can also be thrown at you using mental health cases where someone has had um, a DOLS in place, Deprivation of Liberty Act, uh, where they've had their competency removed and therefore the doctors act in the best interest of the patients. There are also certain laws that you need to be aware of. For example, at what age does the UK government call someone a child over an adult? That is 16 years of age. So this is uh, linked to the competency part because if an individual is below 16, you'd have to assess Gillick's competency, whether this child has the ability to retain information that you tell them, say it back to you in a different way. This way you can understand that this child has the ability to make the decisions for their own treatment, even if the parents want a different type of treatment. This can often be used in examples where the parents are of a certain faith. It could be a Jehovah Witness, for example, and they don't want their child to have a transfusion. If this transfusion is life-threatening, then, then you as the doctor will take a competency assessment on the child to assess whether they can decide their own treatment options or not. In the UK, euthanasia is illegal, however, it's a very grey area and it's a very good topic to discuss uh, in an interview setting because if the patient's prognosis is bad, you can turn off the life support, which abides by NHS policy, but technically can be classed as euthanasia. You could also discuss whether the patient said they're going to go to a different country like Switzerland to get the euthanasia. Are we abiding by justice if we're making the patients pay to go to a different place to get treatment done, which they could get done for much less in the NHS. So that was the crash course in medical ethics. If that helped you at all, 
which I hope it does in your upcoming interviews or for those of you that are preparing for possible interviews, click the subscribe button and maybe the like button. It helps my channel grow so I can carry on making good content and share my experiences with you guys out there that are taking the same path. And I wish you all the best and that you can all be brilliant doctors someday. You sit down, down.